Thank you. I'm talking to you today in a personal capacity, not on behalf of Extinction Rebellion. I'm in rebellion against the British government for its crimes against humanity, for its refusal over the last 30 years to take emergency action to reduce carbon emissions, for facilitating the genocide of the next generation. So I've got this feeling that at conferences like this, you have someone who stands up and does the talk about climate change. It's been going on for 30 years now. There's something to tick off, something there in the background. Done that, move on. I don't want to give that sort of talk. What I want to do is to talk to you. And I've got this idea, it would be a good idea to try and show that I'm human. I'm actually an ordinary, everyday sort of guy. In fact, I'm a bit of a fuck up. I haven't been very good at my relationships. I've failed at businesses. My mother, my father, they both died in the last five years. I sat by the bed, by their, on their deathbed. I knew there was nothing I could do about it. I know that I'm going to die. My body will turn to dust. I'll be forgotten. I get depressed. And to be honest, I don't know what to do about it. And I suspect that many of you are a little bit like me, right? Behind that sheen, behind the positivity, you know you're a bit of a fuck up too. Maybe some of you think you're gods, but I suspect you're not. And there's this old idea, isn't there, that in order to connect with each other, we should confess. So I'm going to make a little confession to you. I've been a vegan for 34 years, but when I get a bit down, I buy myself some milk chocolate. I never said that to an audience before, but there you have it. So, let's do a little experiment. I want you to talk to the person next to you. This is how it's going to go. Talk to the person. The first person that gets to speak gets to speak, and I want you to confess something. The biggest thing you can think of that you're able to do. It's only going to be 10 to 15 seconds. First person that gets to speak gets to speak. Turn to the person next to you and give that confession now. Okay, that's time out. You've had time enough to give your confession. Okay, so what I want you to do, please stop. That's it, time out. What I want you to do is to put your hand up if you, if you made a big confession. Put your hand up if it was a big confession. Put your hand up if you made a big confession. So that's what? About 1% of you. Maybe some of you are shy, so let's say it's 5% of you. So I'm a social scientist. I believe in normal distribution curves. You're my outliers. You're the 5% of people with courage. You're the 5% of people I'm going to be talking to primarily in my talk today. You're my people. You're the people that are going to make the change. You're the outliers. Okay, so I think this session is about value, right? So what I've got to say to you today is values don't mean shit. What counts in the world today is courage. The courage to put values into action. 
You can have values, 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 but unless you act, they don't mean anything. I do civil disobedience, Extinction Rebellion does civil disobedience. The first time, the first time I did civil disobedience, my legs were shaking. I was blocking a road. After I'd done it 15 times, after I practiced that muscle of courage, I took a book to read when I was sitting in the road. Nowadays, when I go to court, it's just another thing I have to do that day. It's on the list. A little while ago, I painted the Grand Hall of King's College. I caused £7,000 worth of damage with other people to get King's College to divest from fossil fuels. It succeeded in five weeks, but I was taken to court. When I went to court with my co-defendant, we didn't have a lawyer. We spent 30 minutes thinking about what we were going to say. We stood up, we said our truth, we painted on the walls to stop shit from happening. The jury agreed with us and we were found not guilty. That's courage. So courage is not not having fear. Courage, as the saying goes, is deciding there's something more important than fear. And what's more important than fear is this massive head fuck beyond the imagination threat we now have on the climate. So I'm going to do a little experiment. I like doing experiments. In a minute, I'm going to take my shirt off. Don't panic, it's not illegal. No one's going to get hurt. It requires a little bit of courage, so let's do it. Okay. The world didn't fall in. God didn't strike me down. Maybe you're feeling a bit queasy. Maybe you're a bit amused. Maybe you feel a bit irritated, a bit pressured. This isn't quite what you came to the conference to see. A middle-aged man taking his shirt off on stage. But I suggest to you that that's what being radical is doing something genuinely outside the box. Okay. So that's courage. So I've come today to tell you something pretty straightforward. The world is fucked. There's fires in Australia at this moment bigger than European countries. A billion animals have been killed in the last month. It's arrived after 30 years. Carbon emissions have gone up 60%. They're still going up. We failed. I failed. You failed. Those of you that run those big businesses, you have failed big time. It's nothing to do with values. You've got values coming out of your ears, right? Values, 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 but no courage. Those courage muscles have withered. Maybe you feel a little bit affronted by that. Maybe you feel a little bit defensive. But with all due respect, the 95% of you 
that are going to go away from this talk and forget about it, apart from the bit about the shirt. You people, with all due respect, are now historically irrelevant. There's this idea of manifest destiny. Are you familiar with this? The Europeans went out, they killed millions of Native Americans, they killed millions of Africans. Manifest destiny. The Europeans had the guns, they had the spears. Well, the tables have turned. We have the courage, you don't. You had 30 years. Greta Thunberg, 17-year-old, world famous. Why? Because she's got courage. Why have you invited me to this conference? Not because I'm a failed farmer, not because I'm a manual worker, but because I've got courage. Courage is not about winning. It's not about success. It's about failure and humiliation. I recently did an interview with a German journalist. I wanted to communicate my love of prophetic Jewish culture. I wanted to make the suggestion that the German people had a historic opportunity to say never again. Never again. Never again to the killing, the killing and the killing that led to the evil that we all know about. And here we are today planning the murder of billions of Africans so that we can get on those flights 10, 20, 30, 40 times a year, so we can continue to eat meat, so we can continue to ignore the plans of our governments to engage in this genocidal project, knowingly, willingly, in the full knowledge of 30 years of objective science. In the next decade or two, many of you are going to have to organise directly and indirectly the killing of other people, and other people are going to be organising the killing of you. Because this is what social breakdown actually means. Climate change is not about polar bears. The penny has dropped. What? climate change means is economic collapse. It means the loss of your businesses, it means the loss of law and order. There's going to be desert in Italy and Spain, the ice and the snow is going to melt in Switzerland, those great German forests are going to burn down, it's coming. The fascists are going to win the elections, they're going to have us building walls, they're going to send your children off to slaughter in war. That's what's coming. That's what the 5% of you know. You're the 5% who've been up at night, you're the 5%, the outliers, those with courage that have been crying at night over it, along with millions of other people. You're like the UN diplomat who phoned up Extinction Rebellion and pleaded with us to shut down the COP, shut it down. You're like the BBC journalist that rang us up to tell us to shut down the British Parliament, to close it down. You're like the friend of Bill Gates whose house burnt down, he had to jump in his car with his three-year-old daughter and flee for his life. He phoned me up, he said, Roger, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. So there's 5% of you here that know it's over, right? It's over. The skiing sessions, the cosy chats on the golf course, the quarterly reports, the conferences, the talk, talk, talk about values. It's over. 
What I want you to do is to enter that despair, that self-contempt, that confusion, that feeling of being lost. I want you to look into hell. Why? Because I'm a mobilization specialist. That's what I research. And in my opinion, only when you look into the eyes of hell are you going to be able to deal with that hell. That's the guiding philosophy behind Extinction Rebellion. 200,000 people have joined in a year. 3,000 people have been arrested. That takes courage. The biggest civil disobedience event in British history. It transformed the conversation. In 2019, the biggest influencer in the world on climate change was Extinction Rebellion. Why? Because we're not selling hope. We're telling people the truth. And people are ready for that truth. The 5% of you are ready. So at some point today, what I suggest you do is find a quiet corner and think about hell. What it is for you, what it is for your family, your company, your nation. I'm not going to be doing questions. We've had questions for 30 years, right? This isn't about information anymore. It's not about charts. It's about emotions. It's about actually doing what we have to do. So I'm going to do a workshop at 10.15. I'm a bit of a rebel, so I just said I want to do it. They've given me the space. It's not on the program. The 5% of you that want to actually engage in what has to be done can come along. Because we all know what has to be done. The 2,000 of you today, you could all make those phone calls. You could take two weeks off work. You could go down into the centre of Zurich and you could go on hunger strike. That's what would change Swiss policy on climate change, right? It's not like we don't know how to do it. We lack the courage. So in this workshop, I'll tell you the scientific construction of mass civil disobedience. I'm not going to say it's successful, but what I am going to say is that it may give you self-respect. So that when you're on your deathbed, you can say to yourself, I did what I knew I could have done. What I knew I could have done if I had the courage. And I suggest that maybe that's the only thing we can ask of this life, right? So the adventurers amongst you, I invite you to the main act at 10.15 in the bar. Thank you very much.